hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at how we can get data from our own api instead of the json placeholder for expenses and our application will start showing that data from a laravel api into our mobile app so as you can see this is my recent data point and if i click on them i get the details so this is something which we are going to see how to refactor from the existing api to my own api right so yeah let's get started so before we start implementing the api into the front end let me quickly show you what i have done inside my laravel application to create the api so i'll first show you my api.php file there is a prefix v1 and then we have expense get url and a post url let's go into the controller there is an expense service which is being injected inside uh, this controller this is using the php 8 you know, injection where you don't need to do this expense services so i'm using those uh, niceties of php 8 i have this index page where <coughs> I'm selecting specific fields. These uh, these APIs are for mobile, so it, it is very important that we select only the fields which are required. So if you see, I haven't used the I mean I haven't selected the, the updated at. Right now the user ID is hard coded to one. When I have my authentication in place, I will replace that. Maybe we will do a family uh, thing in general so that. And I can see the expenses of other members of my family, something like that. We, we haven't still done that. Okay, then we order by the created at. Obviously, this is important. And then limit by 10. And if there is any offset, I will use it. Otherwise, the offset is zero. And then we return whatever is there. So this is as far as our get URL is concerned. There is the store URL. Uh, the store method which does this basic validation and if the validation passes i am looking for a, a description a user id and an amount right so if these three fields are there then i just send it to save expense and i'm just creating it over here and returning back the expense which is then sent to the mobile app as a response right so that's uh, what we have uh, pretty straightforward stuff nothing nothing too fancy and now let's look at how we can get the apis to stitch together so i have this thunder client where i have configured my get url and as you can see i have few entries over here i have id 22 which says mobile recharge amount 200 this is some expense amount 10 and then some faker generated content now with this in place let me first start my application hmm um this is a bit weird it should have started right yes so this is working and while this is loading uh, we need to go to our expense list page that's where you know we have everything so expense expenses expenses and in here we are doing what we have expense list right and this is where we are calling the api Correct. So first things first, let's change the URL. For now, this is going to be localhost, then API v1 expense. Now, obviously, what is going to happen is when we get this URL, the data points are going to change as well, because expense now is a different kind of a model. So let's look at the model as well. I'll save this and things will start breaking up. I know that, uh, but that's fine. <clears throat> let's go to types and this. Ideally, I would like to convert this into a model. I will rename that later. Right now, let's keep things simple. We have description and I will add the rest of the fields as well so which is coming from the response so i'll quickly do that all right so i have made these changes but then i can see it is complaining about these values what happens is it expects a camel case so that's fine i can do that because there is only one place where the mapping is happening 
So what is going to happen is from Laravel, although we will get these as you know underscores, but inside Flutter, I'll try to keep this as camel case. I know this is going to be a little confusing, but let's see what you know what is the what pro kind of problems we get. Maybe I'll write a response modifier uh, at some point to convert everything which is underscore into a camel case thing. But right now this is what it is because this is the only entry point from where I'm creating the models, right? And what I feel is if at this point I map underscore to this, it should be fine because then the rest of the application is just referencing that. Okay, now with these changes made, I have started uh, you know, breaking certain kinds of stuff inside our application and we need to fix that. So let's quickly start looking at the errors which we have. Obviously, this is my expense card. The expense card is showing the description and not the name. So that's fixed. Okay, one file fixed already. And this is the beauty with you know, these compilers, Dart is immediately able to tell me which files have errors because of the recent refactor. This is really a very big advantage because you are so confident of doing refactors because of these hints. Okay, so in this, obviously, we will face certain kinds of issues. Let me see. We have changed the URL, which is fine. Um, this is API expense. It's a get URL. This is fine. Let's see where we have reds. Right. In here, again, I'll have to make certain kinds of changes. So this is going to be description. I'll do description over here as well. Let me just copy this. Okay, this is going to repeat. So after description, we have user ID. I'll get those hints, obviously. Dot user ID. Then after user ID, we have the rest of the fields. I'll quickly stub that out. Right. So this is done. All the fields are over here. And then we have one more file where we have errors, which is this. So this becomes description. And this becomes description as well. And I think now we are good. Let me try to reload the application just to be sure that everything is fine. Right. And then if I click, it says connection refused, which is a bit odd. Localhost API v1 expense. Hmm. It's an API. So I should be able to get this in my Thunder client. Let me see in, in my Thunder client if I am still able to get the API response. I do. Okay, maybe it's not working because of localhost. Can I try 127.0.0.1 and then try and reload? Let me see. Okay. Even this is not happening. So let me see if I get my um, you know, IP, my network IP, and then if I can use that. So this is going to be 192.168.7.1, right? That's what I had. 1.7, sorry. 1.7 and then API v1 expense. Let me see if this works now. Okay, reload. Welcome. Come on. All right. So we have the listing in place. As you can see, the first two are something which you know, I had made by myself. And then we have this faker data. If I click on it, obviously, I'll get the detail as well. And let me try and see if I can create one more. This is a bit weird why the selection is not happening. JSON. Okay. Never mind. Expense for demo. 
user id is fine let's just say this is 230 rupees something like that hit send obviously an expense was created now let me go to the get url so obviously we are getting the expense as an api response now let's see if we get that over here so there are certain things which i would like to ideally implement now for example the infinite scroll pagination stuff and also a pull to refresh but as you can see expense for demo is coming which means we are in business we are able to get the actual api data for expenses from our own application so yeah that's about it guys if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel